Good evening, I'm Anita Drilling with the Joliet Public Library. And once again, I'm being assisted tonight in this recording by Ivan Padilla, who also uh, is a staff member at Joliet Public Library. Uh, tonight, we are going to be taking a tour guided by Mary Beth Gannon through mid-century modern architecture in Joliet. So take it away, Mary Beth. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Anita and Ivan, of course. Um, we're talking mid-century modern Joliet. Uh, right after World War II, our service members returned to Joliet. Many of them were seeking new homes for their new families. This is the baby boom. Uh, Mid-century modern era is roughly 1945 to 1969. While many of our service members moved to the Marquette uh, Gardens neighborhood, which I hope to cover in another talk at another time, uh, that was only a small part of our city and not enough room for everybody who wanted a house at that time. So where else can you find mid-century modern homes? If you go west of Midland from the 1400 block going west, on the side streets up to the 2000 block, anywhere between Black and Glenwood, there's quite a few mid-century modern homes. You can find mid-century modern in Bevan Acres, Bridal Wreath, Timberline on the west side. If you head over to the east side, you'll see them in Sugar Creek. When these homes were built, no one called them mid-century modern because they were brand new at the time. So homes were called ranches or the more elaborate ones might have been called California style. Uh, many of these homes have remained intact until recently. Uh, a lot of them have fallen victim to do-it-yourself renovation and lots of gray and lots of subway tile, but there's still quite a few that do remain intact and they are true treasures and highly sought after by those who want a true mid-century modern home. Uh, I think there's been a boom in the desire for these homes ever since the show Mad Men appeared on the AMC channel. So tonight we'll talk about some of these homes, who live there, what the insides look like, and how some of them were furnished. If you have questions, let me know at the end. Enjoy. So let's go to our first slide. Are we at our first slide? I, I don't see We it. are. Okay. Um, I don't know why I'm not seeing it. Okay. Um, we should be seeing a home with a red roof that is 409 North Larkin. Uh, this is the Maurice Adler home. Uh, Maurice worked at Porter Glass Company. Uh, Mid-century modern homes like this one get their influence from the German Bauhaus style with clean lines and form following function. And you can see the sleek lines and geometric forms. What also made mid-century modern style homes like this one unique is there was a lot of new materials available to build with. You can skip past the second slide and the third one you see should be a living room. It is. It, it just don't. Oh, there. Okay, now I figured out what I was doing wrong. I'm sorry, I'm just a little technic technology challenged here, so please bear with me. Okay, so what's great about this house is it was for sale not that long ago, so I have access to several really great pictures. Um, looking at the living room here, you can see the beams, the paneling, uh, the stone trim. Let's go to the next one which should be the uh, blue room. Okay, this is the kitchen. I don't know who bought the house. It, it sold very quickly, just uh, about two years ago, I believe, maybe a year and a half. I'm hoping they kept it the same, but you can see the white metal cabinets. You know, wh whoever had this prior really took great care of it. Let's go to the next one. Uh, you can see some bed frames in it. Um, you notice you've got uh, floor to ceiling, glass windows with a great view of the outdoors. Okay. 
We may be on the wrong slide, Mary Beth. All right. Let's see where I'm at. I know why my computer is just not showing me where you guys are at. I'm You're off one down. slide. What what slide are we on? Because I can't tell. Kitchen. Where kitchen blue. The still blue. Kitchen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The kitchen still has its island. We have more floor. Floor to ceiling windows. Let's go to the next one, which was the blue I was talking about. Okay. And then we've got the bedroom. And I hate doing this to you, but if we could backtrack to slide three, just for a moment. And that should be 451 Larkin. And if you can confirm where they are, because I don't know why I'm not seeing these on my computer. It, 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 it's, it's a house. Okay, 451 Larkin. This is the William J. and Sarah Richards home. And this is right across from 409 North. Larkin, prior, prior to living on Larkin, the Richards family lived on Dawes. William was a meat cutter at Kroger. Okay, and if we can go to slide number eight, which should be 1804. Black Road. Yes, it is. Okay, this is the Eddie and Lucille Murphy Walsh home. Let's see here. Uh, Eddie Walsh was my great uncle, and he was married to my grandma's sister, Lucille Murphy Walsh. They lived on Prairie prior to living in this home. Ed owned Walsh Oil Company. Also, he had a paving business and did quite a few of the streets in town. You go to, uh, this is a Matthew Gregory home designed by Matthew Gregory of Gregory Construction. He built this home as well as several others in town and of several of the nicer mid-century modern. If you go to the slide nine, you'll see a little article that I got from my family. This is uh, when uncle, great, my great uncle bought the land and the land, uh, the farm he bought, the Smith Farm stretched from Black and Larkin to almost where Springfield is. See, a tremendous amount of land. And then he sold off the land in parcels for the subdivisions behind his house. You go to photo 10, slide 10. We are with the uh, Walsh wedding photo. Uh, my great aunt, Loretta Murphy is the maid of honor, and to the to her right is the bride Lucille, who lived in that house, and the bridegroom, Eddie Walsh. I cannot remember for the life of me who was the best man. So, um, slide eleven. Now we're at four fifteen Larkin, which is a few doors down from eighteen oh four Black, and this was Loretta's home that we just saw in the wedding photo, the maid of honor. Loretta Murphy, and she lived there with my great uncle, Charles Murphy. They were both uh, school teachers. My great aunt and uncle were brother and sister, neither one of them ever married. This home too was built by Matt Gregory of Gregory Construction. Uh, my aunt and uncle were both graduates of the University of Chicago. Loretta taught at Cunningham and Uncle Chuck taught in Chicago. Their, their house had a real school room in the basement and all of the grand nieces and nieces would go there for classes and we'd get sweaters made for us. So, you know, it, it was a, a fun experience. Um, let's see, can we go to slide 12? We have the Kennedys. This is a photo of the Kennedy twins at their home off Route 6. I was hoping to get a photo of the house and not just the swimming pool, but had no luck. The twins were the daughters of Dr. Kennedy. Their home looked nearly identical to the Walsh home, and I believe it too was also built by Matt Gregory. The inside was almost exactly the same. I was there in the early 1990s when Ray Petrick was getting ready to have an auction at the home. My mom used to help him sort out antiques at his sale. The home was regrettably torn down for Interstate 355. We lost many great early homes that were near it, some of them going back before the 1850s. 
um, just to make room for the interstate. It's kind of a shame. Uh, if anyone out there has photos of some of these homes, please let me know. Uh, Route 6 was a pathway for many of the East Coast pioneers to work their way to Joliet. Okay, let's go to slide 13. And we are at 1803 West Acres. This is the Charles and Elvira Pillowquin home. I hope I'm saying their name correctly. Uh, Charles was a yardman at the city treatment plant. The home is just around the corner from the Maurice Adler home at 409 North Larkin. This is a short block of West Acres. It's the very last block of it. Matter of fact, it's right by Joliet West High School. There are several mid-century modern homes on this street in this particular block, but this one tends to stand out. So moving on to slide 14, we're at 1304 Douglas. This is the Harry and Rose Mandel Lewis home. Uh, I bet the last name Lewis is familiar to most of you. Of course, Lewis Brothers Shoes. Harry Lewis was born in 1898 in Cheatham, Lancashire, England, and his parents were from Russia. He married his wife, Rose, in Chicago in 1922. Prior to moving to their mid-century modern home on Douglas, the Lewis family lived on Reed Street. The roughly 1,600 square foot home on Douglas was built in 1957. This home has not been sold since 1987, and I have no interior photos for it, unfortunately. Now, let's go to 1210 Mason, which is slide 15. And this is the August and Livia Vazani Martinucci home. Mr. Martinucci was a physician who had an office at 58 North Chicago Street. Their mid-century modern home was built in 1956. It is nearly 2,700 square feet. The Martinucci family is still in this area. And let's go to its neighbor, slide 16 is 1208 Mason. Uh, built in 1956, this is the Al Alice and Samuel Goldhaber home, and it still has its original features. Samuel was a doctor who had his office at 28 North Joliet Street. Samuel was born in Chicago in 1914 and died in 2005. The home sold fairly recently, so I do have some interior photos and they are incredible. Let's go to slide 17. You can see the first one and just look at that stone fireplace. It's amazing. All the wood paneling, the beams, it looks really great. Um, we go to the next one is slide 18. And I think this is part of the kitchen from the looks of it. But again, you, you get that mid-century modern feel with form following function. Lots of natural elements with the wood, simple sleek lines, very clean. Uh, slide 19, I'm assuming this is part of the dining room. I'm not sure with the chandelier in it, but you have a nice use of the wood and the stone together with the beams. Very natural. Uh, slide 20. Look at the use of the cabinets, the simple hardware. Nothing cluttered, nothing too elaborate. Just emphasis on quality. Now slide 21 is the kitchen shot. And you can see that there is a built-in appliance. This one looks a little bit more modern than probably what was there originally, but still it fits within the space and it looks really nice. So let me go back to my notes on this house. Um, so anyway, as I said, I do have these interior photos, which we were just able to look at through the real estate listing. I happened to meet the new owner a few weeks ago when I was outside taking pictures of the exterior of this house and 
naturally the owner came out and he's like, Oh, what's going on? And he thought maybe I was a realtor, but I told him, no, I'm here to do a talk for Gillette public library about the history of mid century modern. He seemed very, very excited. Um, I hope he's joining us now. Um, really great house and he seemed really proud to have it. So let's go to slide 22. And we are at 1300. Wait, no, no, that's not it. Yeah, we're at 1307 Sherwood. So the color photo is what 1307 Sherwood looks like today. It's a mid-century modern brick ranch. And you look at the uh, picture window with the multi panels on it, pretty neat. And if we can go to slide 23, you'll see when this house was a home of the week through the Joliet Herald News. Uh, every Sunday, there would be a different house around town that a staff writer from the Joliet Herald News would write up. And not only would you learn about the outside of the house, you would also learn about the inside of the house, what colors the lady of the house had for her curtains, her carpet, every little detail. And it was one of the things that made the paper really special. Okay, so 1307 Sherwood belonged to the David Reed family, R-E-I-D. Um, it says in the article that I pulled on it that this home was designed for an efficient traffic pathway with the bedroom wing opening to a slate foyer. The living and dining area were partially separated by the entryway with a wall with laminated squares to augment light from the many paned window, which we just saw in the color photo. When the house was new, it had oatmeal colored carpeting, metallic glinted nubby drapes, Danish modern chairs with striped seats, sliding glass doors leading to the patio. The kitchen was done in yellow and orange with built-in copper toned appliances. And the den featured a pull down light fixture. So if we advance to slide 24, we can see some of these details. So slide 24, we can see uh, the Reed's daughter, Heather. She's uh, pictured there in the room. And you notice the uh, Starburst clock on the wall. And the little girl is right by some Danish modern furniture. You know, very much of the time. Let's go to slide 25, which is 1316. Sherwood, and this is the Donald Dominic house. Uh, this too was a Joliet Herald News uh, house of the week. Uh, the house plan was set to be in quote, utmost in living convenience, using a space off the service exit for a laundry, a folding redwood wall. The formal entry has a slate floor, and at that time when it was built, it had oyster, oyster white carpeting complementing uh, the white in the ceilings. There were uh, Naga Hyde chairs, Danish modern Naga Hyde chairs. There we go. Uh, dark contemporary furniture with orange accents in the living room. And let's go to uh, the next shot, uh, slide 27. You can see. Seven. Look at that Danish modern furniture with the striped seats, the big TV. You can see the lamp there, the mid-century modern lamp in the corner. You know, very much of its time. Uh, the article said that Mr. Dominic created two mobiles uh, and hung them to contrast the stone double wall fireplace. We go to the slide 28, you can see the fireplace. Anyway, he made those uh, mobiles to contrast the fireplace and the house also had a boomerang shaped coffee table and a sectional sofa, which completed the room. The kitchen cabinets, which I don't have a picture of, uh, were cherry with copper tone built in appliances. Okay, let's go to slide 29, which is 101 North Prairie. Now, when I first got ready to do this talk, this was a house I've had in mind for a while because it has the butterfly shape. If you look at the front of it, it looks like butterfly wings. And that's a hallmark of one of the types of mid-century modern 
uh, construction. So, but the, the, the thing about this house that makes it kind of unique is I just found out recently that this house did not start out as mid-century modern. If you go to slide 30, it started out like this. It was originally a bungalow home and it was owned by Robert Bannon. He was a contractor. And according to his grandson, who's also named Robert, his grandpa had a lot of cool tools in the basement and decided to modernize the home in 1953. And this is what we have today with the butterfly roof. Did you know that the Bannon family is one of the oldest families in Joliet that is still here? I have records on the Bannon family going back to maybe about 1840. So it, it's pretty neat to have one of those original families still here. So let's go to slide 31. And this is 550 Palladium. This is the Harry Shank home. It sits right by the entrance of this neighborhood and it really stands out. Whether you're viewing it from the front, the side, or the back, Harry Shank was an attorney with Shank and Demas in Joliet. I do not have interior photos for this one. This is one of those houses, I guess, that would, you could say would be on my bucket list to go inside and go check out a uh, really great house. Let's go to slide 32. And we are at 604 Palladium. Uh, this is the Dr. Philip McGinnis home. I'm not sure if it's still like this today, but originally this home had the front doorknob in the center of the front door. I've seen a few houses like this in the Bevan Acres neighborhood. And it's kind of unique. Um, the entry featured a ceramic floor and 10 foot sliding guest closet. Let's look at slide 33 and we can see when uh, this was a home of the week through Joliet Spectator and comfort is keynote with Dr. McGinnis. And you can go forward to slide 34 and uh, here's Mrs. McGinnis sitting in her living room. Now her living room has a little bit more traditional furniture and style, even though the house was pretty modern looking on the outside, she didn't seem to go the same route as some of the others. Um, let's see. So the living room and the dining room had a gold color scheme. The den is said to have featured Carina wooden panels from Southern Germany and rose wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. Mrs. McGinnis apparently really loved her shoes. She had a built-in floor-to-ceiling rack with its own closet made just for her shoes. The bathroom was done in brown and sand and it had a square tub. Let's go to slide 35 and we are at 712 Palladium, same neighborhood again. Um, and if you, you really want to see mid-century modern, I, I think you can't go wrong driving any of those streets over there. Lavinia, Palladium, Bevan, Douglas, great houses. So we are talking about 712 Palladium. And this is the Robert Costello home. This home was also featured in the newspaper. If we go to slide 36. There's a uh, black and white and look at the kind of a checkerboard pattern on the garage. Let's see, 712. Uh, the entrance open to a family kitchen area with a living area in the rear and a bedroom wing. The kitchen was originally had earth tones and built in appliances. Let's go to slide 37. Slide 37 is 712 Palladium's kitchen that we talked about with the earth tones. You can see the built-in appliances. And look at those chairs, very modern looking. Simple cabinets, simple hardware. Again, focus on quality. It almost looks like the floor has some kind of pattern in it. 
Okay, next slide should be 1904 Douglas. And this is the Gustav and Margaret Vermalis home. I don't have a lot of information on them. I do know they owned Green Valley Market and I have not had luck getting interior photos on this one. Okay, slide 39. Uh, this is 712 Lois Place, another street in this subdivision. And this is one of the more iconic mid-century modern homes in town. If I had to pick a favorite, this would be one of them along with 409 Larkin. And the owner of this home was uh, Ray Kinney. The home was built in 1959. The Kinney family has its roots in Kilkenny, Ireland, and then the Manuka area prior to coming to Joliet. I have some members of the Kinney family on my genealogy page on Facebook. It's called Joliet Irish Genealogy if you want to join. Uh, yeah, just Joliet Irish Genealogy. We talk about all the Irish families who settled uh, in the Joliet area and surrounding towns. That being said, most of you probably think of Ray Kinney Motors on Jefferson and Center Streets. And that was his home. It's a, a really great house. Now, if we go to slide 40, Okay, this is Lois Walsh Barron and my late mom, both Lois and my mom are gone now. But if you wonder about some of the streets in town, Lois Place is named after the lady on the left side of the photo. My mom's cousin, Lois Walsh Barron, when her dad, Eddie Walsh, bought the Smith Farm at Larkin and Black, he named that street after her. So that's the two of them together living it up at Lois's place in Miami. Okay, let's go to slide 41. And it should be 504 Lavinia. We are again in the same subdivision. And this is uh, the Albiaz home, I believe. Let me look at my notes. Yes, it is. It's the Albiaz home. And this was also featured as a home of the week. If we go to slide 42, we can see some of the interior. There's the Albiez family on the left, the children, the mom. On the right, we've got the library with the modern sofa with nice dark wood. Let's see what I have for my description. Ah, uh, okay, beige carpeting walls. Drapery's Travertine Marble Fireplace Range. I noticed when I was researching a lot of these houses that many of them have Travertine Marble. They had a 17 foot long upholstered sofa. So if you go to slide 43, you will see a 17 foot long sofa. And it covered two walls. <laughs> Pretty big. Um, and also in the same room was a five gold leaf panels depicting a Japanese antique scenic screen. The furniture in the home was natural teak, ebony, and cane. And they had a pewter Tang Dynasty war horse over the fireplace. And as soon as I heard about the war horse, I, my mind immediately went to the Brady Bunch when, uh, you know, they always had that like horse thing in the living room. <laughs> Anyway, um, the house had a open plan at the time, which was really, you know, that's what people do now, but they were doing it back then too, apparently. But they had an open concept plan with a long kitchen space and the kitchen, which I don't have a picture of, had mahogany uh, plank cabinets. So slide 44. Well, it doesn't really look like this now, does it? But I, I'm sure there's somebody here, maybe several somebodies here who remembered when McDonald's on Jefferson and Woodlawn looked like this. And this is a said to be a picture of the Joliet one and I'm trusting that it is. Uh, McDonald's, uh, our McDonald's is one of the oldest in the world right here at Jefferson Woodlawn. It's been remodeled more times than I can remember. Uh, if you go to slide 45, 
I recently got this at Joliet Public Library because I love looking at the microfilm. I can look at the Herald and the Spectator and pull all kinds of great stuff. And when I saw this ad, I thought, I think this is from 1956. I just thought, well, we got to include this. I look at the hamburgers, 15 cents, cheeseburger, 19 cents, milkshakes, 20 cents. You could get orange drinks, root beer, the crisp hot french fries. You know, it all looks really good. So, and it's always a quick fix. So let's go to slide 46. And we are at 1020 fuel. Now this one I had a, a little bit of trouble with. I, I was always told who had lived there originally. But when I wanted to double check the address with the directories, I kept finding 1016 and then I found 1020. And apparently the address must have been changed at some point to 1020, which is what it is now. This home was built in 1959. It is a California style ranch and it was made for Nathan and Francis Gordon. Nathan owned Gordon Pontiac. I had the privilege of touring the inside of this house when it was for sale about 10 years ago. Uh, John Knutson was selling it. Uh, a former co-worker of mine from ABC Channel 7 News was thinking of buying this home as it's always been his dream to have a mid-century modern house. So I went with him. Um, I wish I still had the photos from the interior. The house was immaculately preserved. I remember a spiral staircase on the first floor it was like almost in the middle of the room and it would take you down to the lower level. The kitchen was all original and if memory serves, I think there were some kind of handles or knobs in one of the bathrooms that had each of the Gordon daughter's first names on them. One of those daughters, of course, is Nancy Gordon Freeman, the realtor. So we'll go to its neighbor here and we've got 1100 Buell. Now this home was built in 1955. It's a mid-century modern ranch. It belonged to Al Greenberg and his wife, Louise. Al was a secretary treasurer of Crown Rock Asphalt. The home was sold in the early 1990s to one of the Munches and it was sold again recently. Let's go to slide 48 and this is the Saper home. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Leonard Saper home. This home was also featured in the newspaper as a home of the week. If you go to slide 49, you can see that. Uh, it's a 3,100 square foot home that was built in 1952. It is still very well maintained to this day and belongs to one of my neighbors. Let's go to slide 50. All right, everybody knows this, right? Jefferson Plaza. A huge crowd turned out for the opening of Jefferson Plaza in June 1955. We go to slide 51. There's a nice little ad here for the opening of the Skylark. Um, one of the things I, I wish I had, and unfortunately I don't, if someone else has it, please let me know. I wish I had a picture of the Skylark restaurant sign. I don't know what happened to it, but I would love to have just a photo of it. Um, you can look at that. I mean, people are really excited for Skylark to open. Look at slide 52. Here's the bottom half of the ad. So opening June 10th and 11th. Let's see, the $250,000 plaza featured nine units of business and parking for 60 cars. The plaza was owned by John Samios. Construction began in November of 1954. Some of the businesses included, let's go to slide 53. Here we are, we can look at the Skylark. Uh, go back to 53 for a sec. Okay, 53, we can see the restaurant, you can see the counter, people enjoying their meal. Look at the sparkling stainless steel kitchen, immaculate counter. 
an attractive guiding room. Okay, now if we could go to 54, and I'll talk about some of the other businesses there. Um, there's uh, Stella Corelli. She was a beautician and a longtime friend of my great aunt, Mary Lou Nealis. She had her beauty shop there. That was one of the businesses. Let's see, Let's see some of my notes. So like I said, the construction began November of 54. Some of the businesses included the International Shop, which featured imported gifts, women's wear and accessories. Uh, let's, Joliet Paint and Wallpaper Supply was there. Let's see. Uh, that was owned by Richard Benedict and Steve Kula. They carried DeVoe paints and equipment. Ed Kroll had Kroll's store for men at the plaza. Sherman Smith had uh, Appliance Maintenance Corporation there. And my great aunt, Mary Lou Marble Hill Nealis, owned Sugar and Spice. It was a clothing store for teenage girls. My late mom and her best friend, Kay Altoff Pemble, used to model the clothes there. My great aunt would go to Chicago to regularly pick out the latest styles for Joliet's teenage girls and bring them back here to Joliet. Let's go to slide 55. Now, I don't know if you'll recognize the lady, but you'll, you'll certainly recognize her last name. And this is Mrs. Kukas, of course, uh, Al Kukas's wife. And what stood out to me with, when I saw this picture, it was just a picture of her cooking, but you know, it was a mid-century modern Joliet lady with her mid-century modern kitchen. I could see fruit wood cabinets, simple poles. You look at her modern stove and her modern appliances. So I thought that was kind of cool. And at that time, the Kukas family lived over in the Rewood area. Okay, slide 56 is 1304 John Street. And this house belonged to Dan and Sarah Gavoni. He was a manager at Electrolux. There used to be several houses like this in town, but unfortunately they've been remodeled to look more modern, which is kind of an irony because this house was as modern as you could get when it was built. This is what you call a Lustron style home. It's prefabricated. It's made using enamelized metal. There are currently several Lustron homes across America that are now on the National Historic Register. I can think of maybe only three intact ones in Joliet that remain and this is one of them. This house was for sale not that long ago, so I am fortunate enough to have access to interior photos. If we go to slide 57, you can look at, uh, this is from when it was for sale. Look at all that paneling. You've got the built-in shelves, sleek lines. You go to slide 58. Uh, I believe this is a bedroom. Looks like you have built-in closet, dresser there, lots of cabinet space. And let's go to the last photo of that house. It's slide 59. And there's the kitchen. And it's, it too looks pretty original other than the floor. You can see the tiles, very mid-century modern. The sink, you can see the built-in cabinets. Very much in keeping with what it was. Hopefully it it stayed preserved. I don't know what the new owners have kept or gotten rid of. Let's go look at another Lestron style home and that's in slide 60. In slide 60, we are at 819 Mason and this is the John J. White home. Let's see, Dolores and John J. White lived here. John was a salesman with Sid Miller. Like the Gavoni home on John Street, the White's home is also in green lustron enamel. However, I've seen lustron homes in Joliet with a beige purplish color. There used to be two of them, I believe, either on Taylor or Mayfield, but the enamel squares were removed about 25 or 30 years ago to make the two of those houses look more modern. Okay, let's go to slide 60. One. 
Now we're gonna enter uh, yet another neighborhood in Joliet with Mid-Century Homes and we're going to Bridal Wreath, which is just off Black Road. You can turn in either on Pearson or you can turn in on Lilac and it's full of affordable ranches. We go to slide 62 and here we go. Nice ad from when these homes were built. New larger national homes at Pearson's Bridal Wreath Acres. Two model homes completely furnished. Can you imagine getting a house completely furnished and decorated by decor interiors? If you were a veteran, you only had to put $300 down. Very affordable. Okay, two, uh, two ranches here. We've got the Glenbrook, not sure the name of the other one. Let's go to slide 63. And another thing about the Joliet Hero back in the day is on Saturdays, it had something called Family Magazine. It was a supplement that would come with the paper and they would feature a different local person on the cover of the magazine every week. And I picked the Seneca family because they lived in Bridal Wreath. And I thought that was a really nice photo of them. And in the photo, uh, we see Mary, David, and Sherry getting ready with their family for the 4th of July weekend. We go to slide 64. Since I showed a photo of the Seneca family back in the day, it's only fair to show a photo of their house which was 1101 Cyprus in the bridal wreath. And it belonged to uh, the children's parents, Rita and Leon Seneca. Okay, let's go to slide 65. So I thought we'll come back to some houses in a few minutes, but I, I found some ads that I thought were interesting of the time. And this is a lady, her name's uh, Sharon Healy, and she was a bride-to-be. And the Herald did a special on her getting all her things for her wedding and all, visiting all the different stores in town. It was a great way to do product placement and get the other brides to register at all these different businesses. And what stood out with this one to me was the mid-century modern uh, serving dishes at Barrett's. You know, a lot of people think of Barrett's as just tools, but they had plenty of things there for the ladies. And even I remember in the 70s, they, they had toys there at Christmas time. You know, they, I remember seeing Sonny and Cher dolls and I wanted them and my mother didn't get them for me. So blah. anyway, <laughs> let's go to our next slide, slide 66. We have a, an ad from Goldblatt's. And this is from The Spectator. And here we are with a chrome dinette set. And that's something that many families had in their home in the 1950s and 60s. You know, very comfortable, reasonably priced, and on sale here for only $79.99, usually $129.95. And my, my, my grandma Mary loved shopping at Goldblatt's. That was like her go-to place, you know, you know, people my age now, they all love going to Target, but, you know, Goldblatt's was the place. And speaking of Goldblatt's, let's go to slide 67. We're, we're going to go get some printed acetate drapes. And those of us in the antiques business call this bark cloth. You know, it's kind of a textured drape. It has a wild print on it. And look at, you could get a pair of these for only three bucks. Pretty good deal. Now, slide 68, you want to do some more mid-century modern furnishing of your home. All you had to do was hit the Boston store. And the Boston store was offering these blonde oak and brass tables. They look like they're maybe made by Haywood Wakefield. And they were only $20 each, no money down, months to pay. Slide 69. I found this nice ad of some ladies getting ready to get their uh, back to college clothes at the Boston store. And at the time this ad came out, Boston store had two locations. They had their store downtown, of course, 
and then they were at Hillcrest. So I'm thinking this ad's probably from about 1960. I think Hillcrest opened in 59, so it's either 59 or 60. And you can look at their modern hairstyles, you know, very chic. And last ad for a while is uh, slide 70. And this is also Boston store. I guess I'm partial to Boston store. Uh, look at that great sunburst wall clock. That was another thing you had in the home. If you had the boomerang table, the Danish modern, the sectional sofas, maybe pink appliances in the kitchen, you had that sunburst clock too. And another thing, no home, mid-century modern home would be complete without is if you look on the right, we've got Franciscan Desert Rose China. You could also get in the apple pattern. Um, I buy a lot of antiques in town. I can't tell you how many sets I've seen of that Franciscan wear. I wonder, did they all get it at the Boston store? All right, back to the homes. Let's go to slide 71, which is 1615 West Acres. This is uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ned Oliver home. And this was also a home of the week. And if you go to slide 72, not only was it home of the week, according to the Heralds, it was also a national home of the week. Pretty impressive. It was in a quote, Monterey style. And it was built by William Pearson Construction. Now we talked about Pearson a few minutes ago with bridal wreaths because Pearson also did bridal wreaths. The home, at that time featured gold shadow paint and white shag rugs. The living room to the back of the house could be divided for guests sleeping with a divided wall. Danish modern furniture could be found throughout this house as well as blonde wood step tables. Now we saw those step tables a moment ago in the Boston store ad. Uh, the house had a sectional sofa that was accented by Egyptian themed drapes. The kitchen was done in yellow and orange with a yellow refrigerator. Kitchen cabinets were white and the bedrooms featured blonde wood furniture. All right, we're going to move to a new, let's go to slide 73 and 4. If we look at 73 first, um, this is the Oliver kitchen that I was talking to you about. You can see the modern canister set. Uh, look at the stove, very modern, very chic. And slide 74, there's Mrs. Oliver and she's got that uh, sunburst, starburst uh, wall clock. And you can see her drapes behind her, the Danish modern sofa to her right, and the Danish modern coffee table. Now we're on slide 75 we're going to a new neighborhood and we are in timberline this is 201 timberline court it was built in 1959 for mr reynolds he was a life insurance estate analyst it's an l-shaped ranch if you look at slide 76 here's uh how it looked back in the day this is the side of it. So it's from a different angle than what I took, uh, but it's still the same house. The L-shaped ranch had a foyer that was surfaced in quarry tile. It featured white walls, dark oak floors, and a center beam in the cathedral ceiling that made the home feel spacious. So let's go to slide uh, 77. Slide 77. Now take a look at that. You can see uh, the windows going from floor to ceiling. Very open, simple, no clutter. Let's see. Living room featured green and white nubby drapes, a leather chair, and a coffee table that was only 10 inches off the ground. <laughs> there was a white chandelier in the house that had nine branches with multicolored discs on it. Um, Mr. Reynolds used to display his grandfather's Civil War discharge papers in the home. The kitchen had fruit wood cabinets with built-in appliances. Okay. 
let's go to the next slide, which is slide 78. This is a little, a little fuzzy, um, slide 78. Uh, this is in Sugar Creek. We're going to look at some mid-century modern on the east side. I, I did this one with Google and it pixelated slightly on me, so bear with me. If we advance to slide 79, we'll look at it uh, back in its heyday, home of the week. Nice black and white. Uh, you see it says brown trim contrasts with the buff Roman brick in the four-year-old ranch home of the Charles Gregory's 400 Sugar Creek Drive. Okay. Uh, Charles Gregory had this home built by Gregory Brothers contractors. Now you heard me mention Gregory Brothers a lot tonight. Gregory Brothers built the Walsh home at Larkin and Black, which belonged my great aunt and great uncle. Uh, he also did uh, 415 North Larkin, my other great aunt and great uncle. And I, I believe he did a lot of the homes in Bevan Acres. But in addition to that, he, he apparently did some work over in Sugar Creek. Now, Charles Gregory was with Joliet Office Supply Company. This home was designed to have an efficient floor plan to accommodate a family with young children. The home was also designed to let light in in many ingenious ways, according to the article. So let's see, we have for pictures of it. Uh, slide, let's see, slide 80. So we've got Mrs. Gregory there sitting on her sofa. We've got beams on the ceiling. Let's see, some of the features, uh, how it let light in included uh, a floor to ceiling bay window, a fluted glass flanked entrance to the home. There was also a picture window over the kitchen sink, windows over the doors to the garage, screen back porch, and terrace off the sleeping quarter with glass panes. Uh, the house, you know, get, get ready for this. You thought uh, the one lady had the long sofa, the 17 foot long sofa. Listen to this. This house had 14 closets, 14. Can you imagine that? I would love to have 14 closets. It also had a laundry chute. I'm assuming all those features are still there. Uh, the kitchen had uh, the kitchen had wood paneling and the dining room was divided by the breakfast bar. Let's see. Let's go to, we're getting toward the end here. Let's go to slide 81. And this is 1517 Sugar Valley Lane. And this is also the Sugar Creek area. Let's see. And this is a Stuart LaFontaine home. It's the house that features twin levels. Let's look at slide 82. I uh, see the buff brick home of Mr. and Mrs. Stuart LaFontaine stretches across the top hill on Sugar Valley Lane. Uh, let's see, the 77 foot long brick ranch has the majority of the living done on the one floor of the home with a rec, floor, rec room below. The home featured gray walls and gray floors with geometric pattern drapes and had a say Bedford stone fireplace. The kitchen featured pink plastic, yes pink, and stainless steel tiled walls to complement the birch cabinets. Aquamarine and pink polka dots were on the floor of the kitchen. The bedrooms were finished with blonde furniture and the bathroom had a pink tiled floor. If we look at slide 83, we can look at some of the mid-century modern. See, uh, you see the drapes. We've got some bar cloth drapes. We've got the mid-century modern lamp and coffee table and chairs. Very sleek, very chic. Now, that is my last photo. I thought I had a photo in here of home cut, but I'm not seeing it. Um, did anyone have any questions at this time?
I think most people may have their mics muted. Oh, still muted. Okay, sorry. Um, Mary Beth, um, do you have, uh, where can we find your website and do you have an email address where people can contact you? Yes. Um, people can email me at Mary Gannon, N U, M A R Y G A N N O N, N is in Nancy, U is in University, at Gmail dot com. I am in the process of opening up a page on Facebook called Mid-Century Modern Joliet. It's probably going to take me another week to get it open. I started on it over the summer, but I want to add some of the houses I talked about tonight to that page before I open it up. Um, you can also send me a friend request on Facebook. I'm always happy to look up any old house in town if anyone wants to know more about the owners. And I also do a lot of genealogy work. Um, one of the things I, I wanted to do tonight, but it's rained the entire day. I was talking to Nita about this earlier when I was at the library today. It's, I have a Ames Knowles chair in Ottoman that belonged to Mary Bar West. I, I bought it in the late eighties when I was in high school. I had this idea of living in a mid-century modern home and I was going to fill it all with mid-century modern furniture and when Mary passed I went to her auction I bought the chair but it rained and I was afraid to take it out so we come back and do this topic again we'll have the chair there it's quite comfy it's stood the test of time well thank you Mary Beth for this evening and thank you all for joining us and don't forget to register for the upcoming November uh, program and the December program. And you can do that on the Joliet Public Library events page. And so until next time, thank you.